Can you believe that? What is that? Four games in? He is barely unpacked in Columbus. So if you're if you're not paying attention to what's happening south of the border, uh, we can reason with that because the Canadian division is offering you up content every single day, and it's not going to stop for the next, like, three months, four months. But Patrick Laine has played a few games down at Columbus. He got benched last night. He barely played in the first. Well, he played a, a, a normal amount, I guess, in the first. Barely played in the second. Didn't play in the third. And Tortorella came out post game and just said, Basically, it's going to stay in the room, which is fine. He doesn't have to explain anything publicly. I can say this. Tortorella's got to explain it to his GM. I guarantee you Kekalainen was down there right after the game saying, take me through it. What the hell's going on here? We just acquired this guy. Pierre-Luc Dubois wanted out. Miku Koivu retired today probably because he's like, I've had enough. I can't deal with this. Uh, but Tortorella essentially said, and his team has essentially said, his players have said, if you don't work, you don't play. And if you don't do it my way, in terms of the details that I'm looking for, you don't play. And as harsh as it is, as ridiculous as it might seem because Line is just getting there, I can reason with this. And quite frankly, I think Patrick Line, this could be the best thing that's ever happened to him in his career. This is a fork in the road for Line. He can go left and be playing in Finland in five years. He's made enough money. He's made a fortune already. He's, He's an uber talent. Or he can go off to a third team, fourth, fifth team, do whatever he wants with his life, without whatever he wants with his career. He has had fundamental issues throughout his career. He has had work ethic issues. Like Paul mm-hmm. Maurice, I'm sure in a candid moment, would tell you, this guy has driven me crazy before. He's so good, so talented, but he is flawed as a player because of the fundamentals and the work ethic. And the one one avenue down the, the fork in the road is four or five teams back in Finland in five years. See you later. You had a great run. You made money. You got talent. See you later. Or... He might be at the Hall of Fame someday saying, I want to thank John John Tortorella because if it wasn't for him and making me snap out of it and realize I got to move here, I got to do things, I got to complete my game, I never would be standing here today because he's got that level of talent. Like, Line is uber talented, but he is a flawed player. So I'm shocked it happened this quickly, but I'm not surprised Tortorella said, I'm not going to have it. Like, Torts has built something there that works because they win games, and if you don't abide by it, you're out. Or you're on the bench. The biggest question is, and there's so many different layers to this. First of all, there's one thing that that a lot of people wouldn't have have watched on the TV as far as the Columbus reaction to it. And and, and I'm not just saying this, Hayes. We always joke around. If you didn't play, I don't know if you'd pick it up. But I was disappointed in Cam Atkinson's comments. He sounded like Torts' son. And he was like, if you don't play hard here, you don't play and you're going to get scratched. That's no matter what. Maybe go up to line and pull him aside and say, look, man, around here, it's just got to be balls out every shift or it generally doesn't work. Don't go in front of the camera and act like a hero, like the teacher's pet. That that pissed me off seeing that. That kind of stuff was not around when I was in the big league. So Cam Atkinson, please don't do that again because I thought that was nonsense. But the other question is, do you want every player in your lineup to be Charlie Hustle and block shots? It's like... Do you want Patrick Line? Like, that's just not, he's a goal scorer. He is a goal scorer. Is he going to play a 200 foot game? Ray has said a hundred times, I'd rather a guy that's got an 80 foot game that can score every time he goes down the ice. So, really, what are you looking for from the guy? And it's just crazy that this has happened too soon. And you could just almost tell by Line's reaction on the bench, Hayes. It's not long before he says, check, please. I got to get the hell out of here. Well, too. he better be careful, though. I mean, listen, he, he No kidding. It only goes so far. It only trust goes me, so far. Trust me, when you have the capabilities of scoring 50 in that league, you'll, he'll, he'll have another couple shots. Trust me. Well, that's the thing. Like, you look at this team, and if we found out anything watching them play against the Leafs in the, in the play-in bubble, whatever it was called, uh, it's that they don't have game breakers on that team. They, what, they have two guys that scored 20 goals last year. And here's a guy that comes in from Winnipeg. He had five goals in his first four games this season, heading into last night when he's getting benched in the third period. Like, what do you expect this guy to be? And I and I think this is going to be a compromise. Like, there's going to have to be some give on line A's side for sure. But he's not changing completely, right? There's no way he's, he's becoming a different player under Tortorella. Tortorella's going to have to give some in the other direction, in my view, for this thing to work. And Kekalainen's got to be the guy to probably moderate it and figure and Dave, out a way. Yeah. I don't know what you think about a coach's ego, but doesn't it seem like the ego is so great with torts 
where it's always like, oh, we're back to torts again. Uh, yeah. You're the main spotlight, and you're the guy in front of the camera, first up in front of the players. There's no one else to talk to. And I love when he comes out and he goes, ah, benching the players, it's an easy thing to do. It's just like there's so much ego involved with John Tortavella where he knows that he is in the spotlight. And I don't know. I don't know how much he digs it. He claims he doesn't like the media. He claims they drive him crazy. But it doesn't uh, seem like he minds being the center of attention. I don't know. There's so many different layers to this. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think you got to separate how he handles the media and how he works a bench. I, I don't think he's he's benching line A thinking, I can't wait to get on the podium later and talk about it or dodge questions or whatever. But he is the face of that organization in large part no because kidding. of who they are. And it's also 2021, Brian, where every the, the, the solution to getting every player in your lineup going is not always benching somebody. I, listen, I, don't, I, I, don't, I think these guys are coddled. That's just that they're entitled. But that's 2021, and you got to deal yeah. with it. Are they going to respond to a benching? I think not. I really – you think Patrick yeah. Line is thinking to himself lying on his couch right now playing Fortnite? I am going to work my ass off tomorrow. I, I don't know no. if he will, but I think he, he should. I think he better. Like, I, I think Line A is his – he thinks he's something that he is not yet based on what he's achieved because he he's heard guys like you and guys like myself – who have said he's a 50 goal scorer. He's never scored 50. Never no. scored 50. This is a guy who has uber talent that simply has not followed through on it. He just hasn't. And he he, he basically played his way out, out of Winnipeg. For whatever reason, it sounded like it was mutual, like he wanted to go too. But I don't get the impression like Winnipeg was shedding tears. I think they're happy that they got Pierre-Luc Dubois. And this guy it took him four games in, in Columbus, which I'm surprised that it happened so quickly. But for Tortorella to see something that he just simply won't put up with. And yeah. maybe it comes down to line A or Tortorella. That's on the GM. That's on the owner. You know, may, maybe it gets to that point. But line A, we can't act surprised that this guy's a flawed player. His work ethic at times, we've talked about it before. We've seen him. We're like, this is just a float. Like, he's just floating around. And Pierre-Luc Dubois got the same treatment. He deserved it after that shift a couple of weeks ago. And I can't pinpoint one thing that line A did that led to him just saying you can't play again. I will say I think it's extreme to shut him down for the period. You know, skip yeah. a couple of shifts and then get him back out there. That could probably get the appropriate message across. Embarrassing him like that, that's Tortorella, that's ego, that's him being a hero. I'm with you on that. But I think Line A needs to take this and say, I got to snap out of this. Like, I'm, I'm too good. I got too much talent. If he works harder at what he does, this guy could be a superstar. But he's not right now. Speaking of guys who've uh, needed a change of scenery, we were talking earlier in the show about uh, Patrick Lyonnais' arrival in Columbus, and it took all of four games until he uh, he sat on the bench for uh, the bulk of the third period uh, last night under John Tortorella. What do you make of this relationship between uh, Torts and Lyonnais? Well, I, I don't know that there's any relationship yet. I mean, he's <laughs> yes. you know he's been there two weeks or three weeks, and the first ten days he sat in his hotel room by himself. Right, like so. I would say this though: if the coach is never going to establish the the ground rules, at, then you're just you, you haven't. Well, if he doesn't establish them early, when are you going to establish them? So he established the ground rules, and I got benched before. I'm sure. Oh, you got benched before. You hate the coach in the moment. You're like, I can't stand this guy. What the hell is he doing? And then the next day, you're like, screw it. I'm just going to play better, and you play better, and so. Tortorella's got to, you know, has got to deal with the second part of this benching, which is once you get past the game, then you've got to, you've got to move this thing forward so it doesn't happen again. He's worried about winning last night. You know, he obviously felt Line A should have done something on the one goal against at least, or he didn't like a couple other things that was go going on. I wasn't watching the game, but he makes a decision and benches him, and it's because it's torts. It's a big deal. Lots of coaches maybe wouldn't bench him. I know, but Kekalainen's like, hey, got, got to be going down there, Ray, and saying, really, again, we're doing this? We just had Koivu retire. Dubois wanted out of here. Nobody else wanted to stay in the last three years and be here. And now we're really back at this situation again? He must be thinking, we're in a small market, but all this attention, I don't know if I really like this anymore. Well, if you think all of the things are related, I mean, I don't know what Miko Koivu retiring has anything to do with John Tortorella. Well, I know. I mean, I, that's just another thing where it makes people raise their eyebrows and say maybe he just got sick of it. And uh, I don't know, but it's just. Yeah, it, it seems early to me, oh, for, you yeah. know, to be, you know, to, to jump on the bench train. Um, 
you know, like in – How about skip a really shift or two? There. How about yeah. one, or, one or two shifts and a quick whisper in the ear, go get them, pal, instead of <laughs> take your skates off? You know? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's in the that's, – that doesn't seem to be in John's playbook. No. So, I mean, when I saw he was benched, I'm like, same thing as what you just said. Oh, like, seriously, already? And so I – look, I don't know what the – I don't know how you you easily move forward from that, but they will because that's where he plays. But you know there there is a there is a lot of this that seems to be around all the time, and I think there you know my way would I'd like to think would be a little different, but maybe it wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe you get so PO'd at your player, you're like, you know what? I'm tired of watching you make the same mistake tonight. Just sit there so I don't have to watch it anymore. Well, I, I think it's a real opportunity for Line to to get the messaging. I'm sure Paul Maurice was tough on him and was honest with him and candid with him, not to the extent of benching him necessarily, but uh, we all love the talent. I mean, the, the guy is as talented as almost anyone in the league, but he is, he's been a flawed player, like fundamentally yeah. – his why is he going to get the, it now, though, Brian? Why, I don't why? know if he will, but I, as I said earlier, oh, I think this is a real opportunity for him. Like, I could see 15, 20 years down the road him thanking John Tortorella. Thank you. Like, I needed, I needed someone to come, come and smack me around, figuratively speaking, it's and I needed discredit. to start working harder. It's a discredit to Paul Maurice, though. He's been around a long time. It's just, it's not like he watched him and said, I got to try to figure out something to make this And that's better. on the player, though. Right, like it's it's not house league. If you if you're not if you if you can't get the job done, we you can't just keep blaming the coach for being mean to to Patrick Line, right? Like he he's yeah, he got uber talent, can score a ton of goals. He's made a fortune already. So he's making seven million dollars. Well, think, the other thing, Brian, is I'm assuming the rules are the same for everybody else. It would seem like that I don't way. I don't picture that John has different rules for different players. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you've got to build some collateral with the coach as far as, you know, um, you know, so you can stomach a mistake easier from the player. Right. Like we I had I, I felt like I had very little leeway when I was younger and when I was older, I never even really thought about it. But I can't imagine they've got all these different rules for different players like wants them to play hard, wants them to do his job at this end of the ice, too. And he didn't feel it was happening. So. He pulled the carpet out. Doesn't mean it's the carpet's out forever. It means it was out last night. They won. Yeah. Torch is trying to win last night. They won. So I got an idea. Play better next game. Cam Atkinson didn't get benched yesterday. No. Although he did say, hey, I've been that guy before. That's Torch's right? son. <laughs> Cam Tortorella. <laughs> Cam sure Tortorella. Gets, uh, yeah. I, I said who, to these who, guys who could earlier. Who you say that about you, O? Who would you who is, who, who, who ever said, oh, my son, Jeff, who was the coach? No one. Absolutely no one. <laughs> I, I, told the, I told these guys earlier, like, if you played in the league, hearing that guy's comments, it's like, could you not have maybe pulled him aside? Because he basically completely sewered him and was like, ah, you, know, you, know, you get benched around here if you don't give 120% and go through the wall. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, Murphy, buddy. Cam like, just. Cam Tortorella, can you at least pull him aside and say, look, man, around here, you just got it. Like, this is how things operate. Instead, he goes, he, 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 might, he might as well have put a fake white beard on and some glasses and just said, if you don't go through the wall here, you're going to be benched. That's the way it is. Like, I just, I, I didn't like it. I think Cam's a nice kid, but I didn't like that at all. It was just a sewering job. Cam Tortorella. Yeah, there was always guys, that, right, that were, you know, they were the coach's favorites, and you'd oh. be like, hey, you're, hey, your dad's calling you. Yeah, Ray, I love the guy that would do something on the ice, and he'd come back to the bench, and it was like feather a pass in their own zone, and tape to tape, somebody go, went on a two-on-one. They'd come back to the bench, and they'd go, Coach, is that what you wanted me to do there? And I literally <laughs> wanted to puke my guts out and say, you, you know what? Like, it just made me my skin crawl. Like a beautiful, gorgeous saucer pass through four guys, and it would be, Coach, is that what you wanted me to do there? And the coach would be like, yeah, great job there. That's a great job. I was just well, like, you <laughs> son of a gun. We had we had one guy that I played with earlier in my career, and he was one of his great lines. Uh, he would say, uh, hey, I don't know what happened there. I had my guy in the corner, and... Uh, <laughs> Never, because ne- there was no video then. 
And you'd be like, what the hell happened there? Like, how did we always break down? It's always us. But he'd yeah. always say it on the bench. Hey, hey, what happened down there? He'd yell down to, he was a defenseman. He'd yell down to the forwards. Hey, what happened out there? I had my guy in the corner. And you'd be like, stop it. Yeah. You couldn't have had your guy every time. Every single yeah. time. The greatest defenseman in history. The other guy that's a legend is the guy that pouts the whole game. He hates the coach. He goes on the ice. He, he scores a goal and comes back. And then he's like, Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Let's go now. 20 miles, 20 smiles. Come on now. Come on now. And it's like you are the biggest loser of life. You haven't said a word for three months, and now you scored a goal, and you're Charlie Hustle, and you're you're just the emotional leader of this team. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. 20 miles, 20 miles. Let's go. Uh, it's just Losing 5-1. It was the first goal of the game for you guys. Yes. That's but the guy. That's it, the that, guy. That's going to that's gonna chalk up a comeback because we're all fired up after my big snipe.